And welcome back to part two of the chaos that is the And Stuff Review. So the songs proper, the first song proper, oh, which comes immediately after this song is worth fifty dollars. Yeah, if you're if you're looking it's at the Ghost... track list, this is going to be really confusing. But try to try to follow. Yeah. Yeah. It's Ghostbuster. Yes, which, as I mentioned before earlier, when I was trying to be quasi serious, this is a genuinely good song. Like it's it's yeah. it's not amazing. It's not the best work by any means, but it's good. It's it's a nice reimagining, more or less, of the original Ghostbusters uh, theme song, more or less, from the movie. Yeah. What was it like eighty six or something like that? It's it's eighty five. Eighty five. Okay, I, was, I know it's pretty close. And yeah, it's it's good. It's it's an enjoyable song. Yeah. It, it's an interesting, what they've basically done is sort of a one song to the tune of another kind of deal. Yeah. Because what what you've got is, it's the Ghostbusters theme song in the style of Sepultura. And see, I didn't so, even have any clue who they were until after they released this, uh, this on YouTube. And I went mm. on like a little bit of like a weird rabbit hole moment where I was like, what's this other band? And I did some looking mm -hmm. into them and I was... You know, once again, not my typical cup of tea, but it made for an interesting song, so yeah, yeah. whatever works. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm quite into Sepultura, so it was it was rather fun for me because it's sort He's of like, like Hey, I know that <laughs> it, it was like, wait a minute, this is Ghostbusters to the tune of Roots Bloody Roots. See, I am, okay. I can just immediately like just see your thought process. Like I can actually like there's that meme, you know, of like the of like the woman with like all the writing like appearing around her. Like that's what I, I imagine is immediately going through your head as you're listening to this. You're like, oh my god, it all makes sense. The universe is aligning. <laughs> and just <laughs> right after that, we've got <clears throat> the best song ever written ever. Let's let's do, do the sass. The sass. <laughs> not in sequence either, which proves that he and I are the best lovers ever. We're not in sync at all, which means the motion of the ocean will be completely thrown off and we'll end up falling off the boat and into the ocean itself, killing both of us. <laughs> I'll never really go out in public after this after this episode. You get this right. I'll, I'll be forced to be a hermit. If I if I ever like, you know what's gonna be terrible? I'm gonna have some passenger who's gonna be like, your voice is really great. Do you have a podcast? Be like, well, actually, if you hop over to this one page, you can listen to me bullshit about an album with a guy and be terrified. <laughs> Oh God! All right, so let's do the sex. A very good episode of a, a Family Guy, released back in 2011. I don't know where I'm going with Wait, this. Seriously? No, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> but yeah, it's Psycho Stick has a have a standard of on any of their albums, along with food songs. They will do sex-related songs. I think it's because they're really trying to be highbrow. <laughs> Somewhere along the lines, Rob Stewart of uh, of Psycho Stick decided one day he he really wanted to be the highbrow comedian. So he made sure that he talked about nothing but nipples and dicks, like all highbrow comedians do. Did you just call him Rob Stewart? Yes, I did. <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't catch that. No, I could just I could just keep saying it over and over again with absolutely no flat no pushback. Because I figured it'd be great if we just called him Rob Stewart or Rob Stewart. <laughs> By the way, Rob, if you're watching, I love you. <laughs> My wife is gonna kill me if she ever watches this. I want to point that out. Especially if uh, we actually do go to a psychostick concert, he walks up to me. He's like, "My name isn't Rob Stewart." You're like, "I'm sorry." So, anyways. Madonna, Med I'm sorry, Metal Donna Medley. Let's move on so we don't have to keep talking about nipples and dicks. So instead, let's talk about Madonna, because nipples and dicks. <laughs> Especially since it starts with what, like, like a virgin, which listening to him scream that is hilarious. 
yeah. Like, so, yeah, let's do the sex. That must have been deliberate by them to have the Metal Donna medley right after the song <laughs> Let's Do the Sex. I can't believe that they did not deliberately order that track listing so that those two were. <sighs> Yeah, that's that's genuinely quite possible. And if you've never heard, well, obviously if you have if you've on the album, you obviously haven't heard the song. Um, the best way I can describe this, like seriously, um, would be kind of like how Weird Al used to do, like those big uh, like polka collages of different uh, different songs, all kind of mm. like back to back together. This is essentially a metal version of a bunch of Madonna songs, all back to back together. So they like spliced like you know thirty seconds to thirty seconds to thirty seconds. They end up. It's like what about four and a half, five minutes long. So it's a good collection of her music, it, and it's it's almost six minutes. Long. I was gonna say yeah, it's a good length, and it's it's nice, and it segues well. It doesn't just like cut immediately into the next one, but instead it's, it segues mm. really well. It's well put together. Like this is genuinely seriously, it's well put together. It's a good version of her songs. Although it did make my wife, when I was listening to this earlier today, come poke her head and is like, "What the fuck is that?" <laughs> She's like, how are they getting away with that? Which made me kind of giggle a little bit. Which, it's, yeah, it's, it's a stamp of approval for my wife, who actually likes the Madonna song. And she was like, how are they getting away with this? But it, it works bizarrely well. Like, yeah. When it came up, like, when I was just looking at the track listing, I was sort of like, is this just going to be sort of them doing a parody song in the style of Madonna or something like that. I wasn't expecting it to just be an outright, you know, going from Like a Virgin to, uh, I don't know Madonna songs that well, but it's sort of like Like a Prayer and... I, yeah, um, I can't name them off the top of my head, but it's <clears throat> it's like a good mixture of like early, middle and like late career Madonna. So it's a great yeah. mixture. And it's, yeah, like, I mean, if you ever liked any of her music at any point, or if you've ever, if you've ever watched a movie, because a lot of her music has been in movies, you're going to recognize mm. pieces of this. And it's done in a way that you're yeah. going to genuinely recognize it. It's not like sometimes where someone does a cover and you're like, okay, that was either Justin Bieber or, <laughs> or possibly like losing my religion by no like who the fuck was this supposed to be like you genuinely immediately you're like oh that's madonna oh oh wow okay rob crooning as madonna is an interesting choice but <laughs> it, it it works for the most part i mean some parts you're like eh, but for the most part it's genuinely really 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 good so kudos mm. guys i mean even like the backtrack because i don't know if um like who's singing the backtrack whether that's maddie or not but somebody is doing some backtracking I, work that's also I pretty think good it is I think it is Matty, because it definitely has his sort of uh, like it could, intonations. It could have been Josh. Like, it's possible. Mm. But, like, one way or the other, like, the backtracking, like, you know, vocals are also pretty good, too, mm. in there. And it, there's a couple of times where they do this in their tracks where, you know, you got Rob in the front going, ah! And then you got somebody in the background who's doing a good job, too. So, good job, guys. Yeah. Like, the sound, like, the sound quality for this is remarkably good. So, stop it. You have to be a shitty metal band. Apparently, because I know people constantly refer to them as a shitty metal band, which is just unfair, as evidenced by this track. Yeah. This track is good, it's genuinely good. The next uh, song proper, which again, how dare they? Genuinely... How dare they? Well, I said the next song proper, not the skits. So... Well, yeah, no, no, I get it. You're talking about Jameson Love Song. I know. Yeah. yeah. Jameson Love Song, again, <laughs> a genuinely really good song. It was weird. Yeah, they're not allowed to like, do this. This is unacceptable, especially <laughs> on a junk album like this, where they're like, we yeah. just threw this shit together and threw it out there because fuck it. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, this is yeah. one of those songs, listening to it, the first part was just kind of like a, okay, where are you going with this? But, like, the second two-thirds... You can tell they spent a lot of time up there in the UK because this yeah. this screamed like either you know folksy, either potentially like say British or especially like Irish song that's just like mm. I'm very depressed and I've got my alcohol. 
So, like, obviously, it's a, that's not me trying to do an Irish accent. I'm not even going to bother to try because it'll be the worst butchered <laughs> thing in the universe. But, I mean, you heard my Ian McKellen thing earlier that was supposed to be Patrick Stewart. So we're not even going to go there. It was very fascinating for me because it was all, there was this strange mixture of, like, the first third is kind of like Days of the New. And I can see that you're trying to put me off, but you're not going to manage it. I succeeded already because you discussed it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like a mixture of Days of the New and sort of some of Alice in Chains' um, more acoustic work. And okay. I could yeah, I can see that. And then the, that was like the first third of it. And then the second two thirds of it was like the Dubliners. Yeah, no, yeah, especially like... And I, the only reason why I really know too much about that particular group is, ironically mm. enough, St. Patrick's Day... Um, I played a lot of them. Yeah. I played a lot of them for uh, for my passengers because here in the States, we have a weird obsession with uh, that particular time of the year. It doesn't make any yeah, sense, but it. we're Americans. We steal everyone else's holiday. We're like, we're going to drink for it. So, yeah, like, just it's a thing. Like, like I know Irish people who don't celebrate it as much as you Americans. Yeah, it's best not to think about it, honestly. All right, so we've got, we've got that down. I mean, it was a good song. Like, yeah. I genuinely enjoyed that. Yeah. Uh, next one uh, on the was, list would be uh, what? The Galaxy song? Well, before we go on to that, I do oh, want okay. to make one sort of... I do want to highlight something. As I was saying, Jameson Love Song, genuinely a really good song instrumentally. Especially, I, th I feel like Matty was really doing well on that one, bass line wise. Yeah, it's like, it's genuinely a good one. I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. Like, there's a couple here the, that I, go way outside their usual comfort zone for style, and they do a room. Yeah. I, th this is I have a feeling that they cheated at some points, though. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly, but this is us genuinely trying to excise some of the some of our larking around so that we can give you a legitimate discussion. Obviously, we're better than that. We've never made a joke once. <laughs> oh god. Anyway, so moving on. Yes. The galaxy song. Stephen Hawking did it better. I'll say it right now. Stephen Hawking's did it better. I knew that was coming. At the live performance, they did a far better job. You know, the Monty Python group. That said, as soon as it came on, like I, I, I saw the, t I saw the title, and it didn't click at all until I actually started yeah. like hearing the hearing the music. And my brain was like, "You sons of bitches did fucking Python. What the hell?" Yeah, like uh, a couple of days ago, I was watching some vids with a friend and um it was the same day that i was listening through the, the album for the first time and it's just i i decided you know what i'll share what they've got on the track listing and we both saw the galaxy song and it's sort of like wait a minute yeah yeah uh, and it's we were both rolling with laughter <laughs> i mean it's not bad it's um, a perfectly fine co cover like all joking aside it's a perfectly fine cover hmm. like eric idol yeah. obviously is genuinely the best although the stephen hawking's from the the live performance at oh what was it the o2 i think it was uh yeah about, like three four or five years ago whatever it was like that's still obviously the best just because it's got Stephen fucking Hawking's and, you know, and he's singing it after he's run over another, another, you know, astrophysicist. So it's at parts which hilarious. I, which just as an aside, I was actually cheering when he ran over said scientist <laughs> because I, I absolutely despise Brian Cox. Uh, so yeah, it was, I, I, I do prefer that version, but this is an acceptable substitute. Like if you're forced, if you're like, okay, let's just say you have to decide whether or not you're willing to listen to this particular song by Psycho Stick or Swallow Arsenic, obviously pick this song. Unless of course you've got a really bad situation, but that's another side completely. But I mean, honestly though, it's I mean, good cover. if you're dealing with my ex, then... Let's not, no, let's not, let's not do this. Come on now. Oh, oh she'll never hear this, so it doesn't matter. Edmund, no. All right, moving on. Yeah, moving on. So next is the song about Mega Man. 
Oh, oh, that's right. Which, I forgot that's even then in there. Which that's been on YouTube now for what five ish years with an interesting music video. It's been a while. It's yeah. It's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Heart, so mm -hmm. it was like when I first heard it, it was like, ooh, they're doing a spoof of Heart. All right, you know, for people who are as old um, as I am or older, if you even know who Heart is. I know of them, but I don't know their style. I listened to a lot of it growing up. By the way. If you want to get the proper flavor of heart, you got to go deep down into the guts. Not of a person, but of the actual band. And listen to Barracuda and Magic Man, which is what heart, which, sorry, what the song that this particular one is making fun of. And this is Nick Nolte, by the way, letting you know this stuff. Sorry, I completely lost the train of thought. But no, like heart's, like heart is a major staple from my, my childhood. I, my dad listened to heart a lot, so I ended up listening to heart. And it's, mm -hmm. it's a great, great cover honestly it's a really they did a really good job covering it i mean they threw in the like you know the maker mouse sound effects and that part's yeah. beside the point it's a good cover and on top of that of course some music itself like they did a good job emulating heart so kudos guys like i mean beyond that it's a song about mega man i mean if you know the character you're gonna like the song if you don't know the character yeah. then I don't know. Listen uh, to it and see what you I'm, think. It's quite funny for me because I've done reviews of concept albums based on Mega Man. There's a strange robot that just seems to always want to fight this guy who just loves skulls and we don't know why. Damn, Dr. Well, Wily. This, well, this is reviews of the Proto Men albums, uh, okay. if you're familiar with them. Vaguely, yeah, a little. A friend, um, they signed up to my Patreon and sort of like, these are the albums I want you to review. They alerted me to it, sort of like, yep, these are cool. And so it, it's almost become this strange state of something Mega Man related since reviewing those albums has pursued me in some way. I get that. I mean, I kind of get that. It, it, it's like I was at a convention the month immediately after doing the second of those reviews, and one of the songs from one of the albums was played as sort of interval music. It's sort of like... You know, there's actually a phenomenon this... based around this where um, mm -hmm. until you experience something, whether it's purchasing something or deciding that you want a particular thing or, for instance, you know, in your case, reviewing something, you don't ever really see it in the wild. But after you've done that mm -hmm. thing, now you see it constantly. It's especially true yeah, if you've purchased a car. That. You're like, oh, yeah, because I, I had a Nissan Xterra. It was a great a great little mini SUV. It was great. I loved the vehicle. Before I bought it, didn't see a single one on the road. Even now, I see them everywhere. So <laughs> I think that's kind of what happened with you with this song. You're just like, dum -de dum -de dum don't even know it exists. The moment you hear it and then you do a review on it, now it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's all so uh, like I've been encountering a band called the Megas, who their whole thing is Nintendo based music and specifically Mega Man related songs. And I'm sort of like, what's going on here? Because I know they weren't recommended to me because of listening to Pro Proto Men. It, there was no sort of YouTube algorithm going on there. So I don't know what happened there. And. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's bizarre and, and now we've got the Mega Man song on here and I'm just sort of like what is going on is, is this just trying to tell me I need to play Mega Man yes because I because if someone's willing to donate a Nintendo Switch to me I will or some I'll some give it you I'll tell you what means. I will give you a copy of it on Steam how's that yeah, go for it. Okay, just to, just to shut him up, I will buy him a copy. In fact, I will do it uh, right next now. Next song proper is Toe Jam and Earl. Another video game, which, by the way, prove that these guys are good. My wife never even played Toe Jam and Earl, but she recognized the theme song. Because she was getting ready this morning while I was playing this, and she poked her head out and was like, is that from a video game? I know that from somewhere. So, you guys did good. <laughs> You're got you're like getting you're batting a lot of thousands here, so keep doing the work. It's it's a good a good little uh, good little cover of it. So yeah. Unfortunately it went completely over my head because You're young, I get it. Of, that's one of those games that I've heard the title of and I just thought it was some sort of insult or something like that. No. Toe Jam and Earl are two characters from the titular Toe Jam and Earl, which was available on the Genesis. 
and there might have been a copy on the on the 32x slash CD. I can't remember if it was on the Sega CD or not. Um, but yeah, there were I think two or three games. I know at one point they were talking about bringing them back in like a I don't know a reboot or maybe a maybe like a, a long awaited sequel or something like that. I have no idea if they succeeded at that or not. I haven't followed this game series in decades, uh. but it's. It's a little goofy, kind of like it was supposed to be their concept of maybe like another mascot for the Genesis way back mm-hmm. in the day. Nothing like really stood out about it. It was okay for a video game. You know, some people really were into it. Most people were like, eh, take it or leave it. So Yeah, it's not so much me being young as much as my parents are just sort of like, you've got the computer, that's enough. Yes, but the game also came out probably about the same time that you were in diapers. So, you know, let's be honest with ourselves. You're young. Yeah. In case you're wondering, I'm an old bastard. I may not look at it, but you're still but younger this is, than my brother. This is gray. This that's what this color is. I know the color, like the white balance, is kind of off. It's to make me look less pasty. But this is gray up here. This isn't obviously, but this is very gray. So I'm an old fuck. And yeah, his, his brother apparently is old. So that makes him a child, baby, a wee little little one. So let's move on to the next one. Why am I so fat? Oh, wait, that's not the name of the song. Sorry. <laughs> Actually, it might as well be, because it's about yeah. delicious food, because now we're into the food part. Proof that Psycho yeah. Stick is either A, foodies, B, has the munchies, or C, both. Probably C. It's probably C. Yeah. So, yeah, you've got Chimichanga, which is just going in depth into <laughs> making chimichangas. Hey, hey, it's an incredibly they... complex food. You take a tortilla, it's... then on top of the tortilla, you put ourselves some delicious burrito toppings, and I do not know what this accent is. It's like a mixture of Russian and fuck off. I have no idea. <laughs> but you put your toppings all over it. Put some sauce, put some cheese, and wrap that beach up, and throw it straight into a deep fire. Fire? Yes, deep fire! You just throw it into a fire, roaring flame everywhere! It burns for hours! No, you throw it in the deep fryer and let it fry for a little bit and pull it out and eat it because it's fucking hot as shit, but it's delicious. And that's basically the song, more or less, with a lot of great instrumental and stuff. But... That accent was like the Dixie Chicks fusion of Russian, Mexican, and Italian. It's a meatball! Mwah! <laughs> I don't know. Just roll with me, folks. Uh, Chimichanga goes into Eat an Entire Pizza by Myself. Which is an amazing, simple song, uh, which was performed mostly just by Maddie, right? Like he, I think he wrote it, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just the bass line, Matty. Go- and um, Alex, I think, is doing drum work. And, just, and what's I'm terrible is they stole piece. the audio from his video he uploaded. They didn't even bother re-recording it. They just straight up ripped the audio from the video. And they're like, fuck it, we'll just turn it in. Because you can actually hear him opening up the DiGiorno pizza box. So, good job, guys. You totally remastered that one. <laughs> But it's a great skit on YouTube if you want to watch him make a yeah. make a pizza and then eat it. Basically, that's the song he made while he was doing that. It's kind of like if you ever mm. like start singing about the bullshit you're doing in your life. You're like, hum to hum, microwave for my own burrito. Basically, he made a song like that, but genuinely made a song like that of him talking. Whoa, yeah. I just made my whole desk shake. Him just like doing all of that crazy stuff all at once. He's just like, I'm going to eat an entire pizza by myself. Do, 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 do. Just yeah, having a good time with his bass. So, yeah, a fun listen, but not something serious. Uh, of course, defying my particular build, whenever I hear sort of like having an entire, the whole concept of having an entire pizza to yourself, I'm just sort of like, wait, that's not a standard thing? I do it all the time. I'll eat an extra large to myself and be still be hungry. I'm a fat man. I eat a lot of pizza when I eat pizza. <laughs> Although these days I've been trying to I'm trying to be a little better about my pizza intake, so I will only eat like half the pizza and share it with the wife. Sometimes I'll only eat like, you know, a third of it each and then have the other third for later. Like we're trying to be better, but if you can't tell I'm a I'm a hefty boy. So, I don't eat an entire yeah, pizza by I myself. S- Instead, I eat like two full burritos and a bunch of French fries by myself. As I say, defying my build because I am 
a very skinny individual. It's because you were gifted by super powerful metabolic rates and you suck. <laughs> You're like my other friend. I can't friend. dispute that. I, I have another friend that's very similar to you in that. Although as he's gotten mm. older, I think his metabolic rates slowed down, so mm. karma's a bitch, motherfucker. <laughs> Moving on, we're on to the next Happy Food song. A song... Mi queso. Mm, yeah. Ooh, mm, chef kiss. Ooh, oh. And I have to say, the description of how they make their queso sounds a little too over the top for me. Mm. But still, I can see where it's going with this. Somebody on their group has way too much time on their hands to make food. <laughs> I have a feeling it's Maddie. <laughs> but It's either Matty or... It's Matty. <laughs> Watch this, Josh. He's in the corner. He's like, no one will ever know my secret plan. <laughs> well, Alex is in the back going, I never even eat bra. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, yeah. Like, Alex is a bit of an outlier in that respect. It's just sort of like, do you even eat? Which takes us to our next, our next problem. Who has the sombrero? And was it prophesized? <laughs> <laughs> the motherfuckers got the sombrero. It is a very goofy song. There's no getting around it. Yeah. It's a very goofy song that takes a lot of really weird twists and turns that make no sense whatsoever. And I feel like that's yeah. all we have to say about that one. It's yeah. it's goofy. Just watch out for the aliens. Which may or may not be Alex. From there we get um, to the best song on the entire album. And that is that is not a song at all. It's in fact the outtakes. <laughs> that for some reason no, they put wait wait I I'm no, talking to, no no I'm skipping sober on St Patrick's Day I refuse to talk about it. I already discussed St Patrick's Day earlier in this review and so thus we don't have to talk about this song because I refuse to be sober on St Patrick's Day which I've been sober every St Patrick's Day for the last decade because I've been driving fuckers around so that's why I refuse to talk about it okay it it immediately attacks me and I'm fucking depressed about it okay. I'm not Irish, but I deserve to rap, sing, and dance, and be drunk, and wear green, even though it's supposed to be orange. I don't know what the fuck's going on with this country. I don't know where I'm going with this at all. You, well, well, you don't wear orange on St. Patrick's Day. That's actually a big no-no. Oh, see, we were told, like, as kids, we had to wear green, but then as an adult, we were like, oh, we're, we're supposed to wear orange? Oh, I misunderstood. Oh, oh, no, no. no. In fact, if you wear orange, you're kind of hailing back to the whole reason why the Irish hate the English. Oh. You learn something new every day, don't you, children? Hmm. So... Good. Where, where, like chartreuse? Then, just wear chartreuse. That way, you just best of both worlds. <laughs> Sober on St. Patty's Day. It is actually a decent song in its own right, if very morose. And we will leave it at that, as I'm getting the glare. So the longest track on the album is not actually a song at all, but outtakes. Which is pretty much this entire review is just nothing but outtakes that he's going to be forced to try to decide what he's going to do. So since I'm not even going to talk to the audience right now, and I'm still talking to Edmund, who has to deal with all this, enjoy. I hope you have a good time. This is where the existential screaming comes in. <laughs> Oh, God. Come back once more, and hopefully we'll wrap up in part three. Or part four. Maybe even part seven. We're, we're not even sure at this point. 